Hi, this is Sonia Doucette. In this video, I'll show you how to calculate the cell potential under non-standard conditions when you know the standard cell potential. So for this problem, you're asked to calculate the cell potential at 25 degrees Celsius for the reduction of silver by copper when the concentrations of reactants and products are as shown. And then you're asked if this reduction has a greater tendency to occur under these conditions or under standard state conditions. And I'm actually going to cross out this not symbol as part of the problem because that is indicating that would be the standard cell potential, but what we're really calculating is the cell potential under non-standard conditions. So that was a mistake in the, the writing of that question. So to find that cell potential under non-standard conditions, the first thing you need to do is find the balanced redox equation and the cell potential under standard conditions for that equation, because this is the relationship you're going to use to calculate the cell potential under non-standard conditions. So the cell potential under non-standard conditions is equal to the cell potential under standard conditions minus 0 0.0592 2 divided by n, which is the number of, or the moles of electrons transferred in the redox reaction, times the log of Q, and Q is the reaction quotient. So the first thing to do is to find the standard cell potential. And in order to do that, you need to first figure out the two half reactions and then ultimately the balanced redox equation. So the problem is asking for the reduction of silver by copper solid. So when you have a reduction, you have a gain of electrons. So that means you know that silver, and silver is in aqueous form, is going to gain an electron to become the silver solid. And if you look up this value in a table of standard reduction potentials, you would find that the value is equal to 0 0.80 volts. The next part of this, if silver is reduced, that means copper must be oxidized. So copper is going to lose electrons. And when electrons are lost, they're part of the product when you're writing these balanced half reactions. So here, you have the loss of two electrons because copper goes from a charge of zero to a charge of two plus, and that indicates the loss of two negative charges or two electrons. So to find the oxidation cell potential, you need to look up the standard reduction potential for the reverse of this reaction in a table of standard reduction potentials and then take the negative of that value. So when you do that, you're left with a value of negative 0 0.34 volts. So in order to find the overall balanced redox equation, you need to cancel out the electrons on both sides of these half reactions. But you can't quite do that yet because you don't have the same number of electrons on both sides of the equations for these half reactions. So you have two for the oxidation of copper, but you only have one for the reduction of aluminum. So what you need to do is add an electron here to make the reduction of, of silver two electrons. And in order to have two electrons involved in the reduction of silver, you need two silver cations, which will result in two solid silvers. So now you can cancel out the electrons on either side of the equation because you have the same number and what you're left with for your overall balanced redox equation is two silvers plus one copper going to one copper cation plus two silvers. And if you add together the cell potential for the reduction and for the oxidation, you get an overall standard cell potential 
of 0 0.46 volts. So now you've found the balanced redox equation and the standard cell potential. So the standard cell potential will be substituted into the equation to find the non-standard cell potential, which is the goal here. The next thing you need to do is find Q, or the reaction quotient. So you're given some concentrations here, and these are indicating that we have non-standard conditions because we don't have a molarity of 1. So to calculate Q, you simply take the products over the reactants, and now that you have your overall balanced redox equation, you can determine what that will look like. So your products are the copper 2 plus, so the concentration of that, divided by the concentration of your silver cation, which will be raised to the second power because of the stoichiometric coefficient of 2 for silver in the overall balanced redox reaction. So you substitute in the values that you're given for this problem, so you're going to have 0 0.20 molar divided by 0.25 molar squared. And when you do the math, you'll be left with a Q value or a reaction quotient value of 3.2. Now you can start substituting things into your equation. So going back to this equation that we started with, you're going to have E is equal to 0.46 and that's your standard cell potential that you calculated, minus 0 0.0592 divided by 2 multiplied by the log of 3.2, or your reaction quotient. And when you do the math there, you get an E value of 0.45 volts. So that's what you were asked to solve for. And then the last question you're asked here is, does this reduction have a greater tendency to occur under these conditions where you have non-standard concentrations or under standard state conditions where you'd have standard concentrations. And what you do here is you compare the E0 value, which you found to be 0.46 volts, to the E value under non-standard conditions, which you found to be 0.45 volts. And what you can see here is that your E0 value is greater than your E value, and that means that the reaction shown here has a greater tendency to occur under standard state conditions because the E0 value is greater than the E value under non-standard conditions.